The night drug on, and my phone died before the sun rose, so I cast a small fire spell to light up the room. In the blue glow of the small fireball, I started working on the project I started a few weeks after I started experimenting with making my own runes. Summoning all the materials I needed for rune crafting, I started mixing ink with my mana to write the runes with. I dipped the homemade quill into the finished ink and picked up where I had left off last night. Unsurprisingly, it was extremely easy to find loose feathers to make a quill in a world ruled by magic bird nymphs. My hand shook as the quill ran across the paper, and I had to use my other hand to steady myself. Runes work differently than I had originally believed. They aren't just writing, but more like written spells. You need to be specific, and to have a clear image in mind while making them, or it won't turn out as you expected. I've tried a few different methods for writing them out, but thinking of them like computer code worked best for most of my needs. Unfortunately, I never learned how to code on a computer, so I had to invent my own version for the runes. In the end, I usually use a combination of what I call runic coding and just very specific writing. At the moment, I was working on a wind rune, trying to get something that could fire a controlled stream of fast-moving air that was strong enough to lift a few hundred pounds for a prolonged period of time, but it was more difficult than it sounds. Firstly, Prolonged rune usage drains the mana really quickly, and overstuffing the rune with mana breaks it. Secondly, I have to write everything as the opposite of what I want if I plan on directly inserting the mana. I could use a filter, but I don't want to rely on it in an emergency. Once, I tried mixing my mana into the ink directly, without going through the dowel jar first, but it didn't work, and the rune was overstuffed immediately and crumpled to dust, before the rune ever turned on. For now, I just don't understand how the Dao Jars work enough to replace them. How did a Viking invent this the first time? I thought aloud, getting irritated. Of course, I already knew the answer because I spent the last few months looking through the memories Zacharias put in my head. He did it by accident, and the Nume started perfecting it, probably after he died. I started fiddling with the rune code, which ended up looking like this. 1. Intake air at 200 km per hour. 2. Expel stored air at 200 km per hour. 3. Repeat. After writing that out, and connecting all the letters and symbols so the mana could flow, I used a dowel jar to turn it on. There was a loud whirring sound like a fan turning on followed by a small but insanely fast spinning tornado that formed just above the rune. I felt the wind run along my skin as it was poured towards the tornado, and the rune grew cold. Too cold, and it was getting hard to breathe. I reached out to try and pick up the paper I wrote the rune on so I could break the rune, but the tornado above it was so strong that it felt like it would rip my fingers off. As I gasped for air, panicking, I did the only thing I could think to do and summoned my hammer, letting it fall down directly onto the rune as it appeared. Twilight, my hammer, was thrown backwards and clean out of my hands as the rune shattered, releasing all of the stored air. It was flung into the wall with a massive crash, breaking the handle off and embedding the metal end into the stone. <sighs> I gasped, as the air filled the room and my lungs again. Kneeling on the ground, trying to catch my breath, Confused, shouting voices came from outside. What was that? And came from this way. Check the rooms, find out what that was. The voices started overlapping, as everyone frantically tried to figure out what happened. I'm going to get in so much trouble, I sighed. And I was right. As soon as they figured out it was me doing a late night or really early morning experiment with runes, I got chewed out by the incredibly grumpy major who they had to wake up and explain what happened. Then they woke up Suma, so that we could all have a friendly conversation together. And if I ever have to get woken up three hours before sunrise again, just to deal with this stupid situation again, I will make the two of you do mana exercises and physical training until my wings get tired. Do I make myself clear?
the Major shouted at us. Yes, sir, Sumer and I said. Private Sumer, since Sentinel is your familiar, I consider this issue as well. And I expect this situation will never happen again, the Major shouted. Never again, sir, Sumer said, sheepishly. The Major turned to me. Familiar Sentinel, do I need to remind you of the rules regarding making runes on base? The Major asked. No, sir. Then why were you performing unauthorized rune crafting in your room? Because I couldn't sleep, sir. You couldn't sleep. He angrily repeated my words. You nearly blew up my base because you could not sleep? Well, I guess it is a good thing you were not hungry, too. Who knows what you might have done? Sir, I guarantee nothing like this will ever happen again, I said. As do I, sir, Sumer said. It better not. Now, until further notice, when you are off duty, Sentinel, you will confine yourself to quarters. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Dismissed, he said. And Sumer and I left his office. Sumer didn't say anything on the walk back to our squad's quarters. She silently sat on my shoulder, but I could feel her emotions for our connection. She was angry, sad, and very worried. Sumer... I'm sorry, I said, as we arrived at the building. She didn't answer right away, but let the silence hang in the air for a few moments. When she did finally speak, her voice broke. Good night, Jake. With that, she flew inside. I went back to my room and laid on my bed in the quiet, dark room. <laughs>